Yes. So um, from the um, from the notes that Samantha was very kind to explain, uh, there's this link access request report, which which also very well explained in the email, and uh, there are links. Uh, so you should go to this repo um, and open an is new issue. So what you should say is that, please add me as a collaborator. That's the only thing we need. Uh, the reason that we are going to do is to get your username. So once you get the username, we can add you as a collaborator. The reason that you need to be added as a collaborator is that the repositories that you're going to work today, you, it's not your personal repository. So we are going to work uh, as a team or have this um, feeling that if we are in a team uh, or that you want to contribute to something that you don't have access. So please open an issue if you have not opened it yet. And our uh, code refinery colleagues, uh, because I'm not, I'm going to now um, switch my uh, uh, tab, I might not see the issues. So I'll be uh, very grateful if you could help me um, to add um, new people if they come. Um, yeah. Does that explain, Dania? Yes, so one thing I want to add is if you are working as a team, that you don't need to uh, send an access request here. So there you will be working with your team and your team leader will create a repository for you to work. That's, if you're an individual learner, this is what we, you would, uh, we would like you to do uh, to participate in the collaborative exercise. Okay. Then maybe in the notes, uh, our colleagues could help um, include that as for the voting as well, like if there is an, if they are in a team. I'm um, in the background here and accepting requests. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard. Um, and then, um, you know, uh, from the collaborator document or from the code refinery website, uh, you have today's course, the September course, and we are already done with day one and two. We really hope uh, you got some uh, new knowledge um, from this and uh, enjoyed it, um, what you learned. So we are in the day three. So I'm in this collaborative distributed version control first part, you know, one of two. So that is where I am here. Um, so on the first page, um, we are uh, summarizing um, some uh, introductions and uh, summaries uh, about um, the, the things we're going to learn. And on the menu side, you could jump into different sections. But what I'm going to do is click the next button to start the new uh, lesson. Um, so the concept around collaboration. So what are the motivations? Why, why do we need to learn this? Uh, so as mentioned here, someone has given you access to a repository online and you want to contribute. Let's see the uh, code refinery, um, uh, web, the website that it, it's in, it's also in Git and myself and Dania and uh, Richard and uh, Samantha and everybody, they are, they were invited um, to contribute. So we uh, became uh, contributors in that. Uh, but it, but it might be not not that it's, it's it's not you who created it. It's somebody created. Maybe it's an organization created, and you've been invited. Uh, and we will uh, learn how to make copies of repositories. So let's say uh, uh, there, there are there are so many instances that you might want to have a copy. So let's say if you're work, work, working on your laptop or, or your local computer, and you want to modify the code, then you have to get it down to your computer. Um, so that one example. So there are other examples that we uh, talk a little later. Uh, and then Dania, um, this Git, you know, as a technology, there are different companies uh, are involved. For example, the GitHub, we have the GitLab, you know, there was Git, uh, Bitbucket and uh, so many um, other smaller companies. And also you could have this Git hosted on your institute. For example, in University of Oslo, we have our own Git, which is Git hub.uio.no. In our industry organization that we work, we have gitlab.sigma2.no. So there are different places. Uh, so because of the these different companies, you might find slight variations of the terminology. For example, we will be uh, using the word pull request. Another company might, for uh, gitlab, would use merge request. So pull, merge, we might uh, switch between um, this, uh, these terms when we move, it, move with, uh, between companies, but because we are mostly following up in GitHub, we will 
use GitHub terminology more in this lesson. Um, so once we know, uh, uh, you know, um, how to contribute, uh, we will be um, going through a concept called code review. Uh, so this is to make sure that you know something uh, that, uh, for example, my, I want to contribute something, but I uh, uh, like unknowingly broke something, uh, and and then we don't want to go that into production. There should be some other people just having a look. Um, for example, Danya, like in, in newspapers, so people publish a lot of articles. So this has go to an editor, and you know there's some proof checking going on. So it's it's it, it's something like that, but um, it's more um, like uh, uh, a peer uh, assisted process, uh, like a like process like you have your core developers, or maybe a supervisor is uh, doing that, or maybe one of your peers doing that. So we'll talk about that as well. Uh, does that cover the things that you're going to um, the, the the reason for learning um, Git collaboration today, Danya, or do you have anything else to add? Uh, yeah, you covered uh, most of it. Thanks. And I just want to mention all these uh, workflows. Uh, you, you mentioned about GitLab, a big bucket and uh, GitHub, everything. Uh, and there are slight variation in the terminology, but the workflow is same for all these version control cloud in web interfaces. So we, when you lean, uh, learn Git, uh, today we are going to discuss on GitHub web interface, but uh, the workflow you are learning will be applicable to other. If your university, if your organization having a GitLab, uh, then that that's the, you can implement all you learn today on that as well. So there is not much changes, slight variation in the terminology. That's what I yeah. want to mention. That's a great point. Like uh, if you know the the core concepts, you can apply it across different companies. And I will try to explain a little bit about the terms, Danya. So you have to help me that I don't uh, go over time because the, the main focus of this lesson is uh, for you to practice. So the learners to practice. And we um, this lesson is redesigned actually. I think it's, it has uh, matured very well since we started that learn by doing and then we discuss. So it's um, it's not about like we talking a lot, but we tell you the, uh, the you know, like uh, inform you the things you need to know. And then you have to learn a uh, bit more uh, by yourself. So please uh, help me to keep track of my time because these two could go into tangents and we could discuss so many things. Um, the, uh, now we are in the third day. So uh, if you had followed the course already uh, the up to now or you just joining uh, today, you know a little bit quick. Um, the, um, the concept that we're going to uh, talk, uh, we expect you to know a little bit of uh, it by this time, which means that you have followed the course last two days or you are joining today, but you have some knowledge. Um, so a repository. So when you mean, mean a repository, uh, it means it, it contains all the data, the history, the commits um, that you might now remember what a commit is, uh, the branches, uh, everything included. This is the, the complete package. Um, then a commit would be that, um, that the, the the snapshots you saved with a message that you remember that a uh, hash is included um, to um, uh, so, sort of um, an unambiguously identify uh, the commit. Uh, and then uh, you could tag it, you could give some label or like uh, place um, uh, so, some uh, um, placeholder that you can find later. Uh, and then other terms that we might focus more uh, cloning and uh, forking. So these terms, I, um, I, I don't think uh, it, it's, it's, it's memorizing would help these terms. But if you, when you work, you you got you get it like naturally um, get into your sort of like muscle memory what these things are and how you do things. So uh, I'm not going to spend too much time on uh, describing each term. Uh, and also, Dania, with Git, that I what I found out is that rather than learning what is a commit is learning the overall process and find out where the commit fits helps me to understand better. For example, now we are going to talk cloning and forking and uh, using templates and um, copying repositories. All this we will we, we'll try to um, uh, kind of learn to, together, but there are uh, different concepts. Um, so um, there are many ways to get a copy. So one way is to get a clone. So that is how you work 
specifically when you want to get a copy of something to your uh, local computer. I could give you two, two, two examples. One is that uh, I want to get some code from, uh, you know, computer computer code from somebody who, who is hosting uh, on the web, um, on GitHub. Uh, and then I want to do some modifications and I want to maybe contribute back or maybe for my use, I need to do some modification. Then I need to get this code uh, to my computer. Um, when I want to, uh, when I, when I, when we preparing for this lesson, when we want to modify some text on code refiner website, uh, I made a clone of the code refiner website uh, to my laptop. I made the change and I send it back uh, requesting, can you please incorporate this? Um, you could do the same thing in the cloud, which means that you, without cloning to your um, laptop, you could clone it inside uh, inside uh, GitHub itself and have the copy uh, in the in the cloud. So the way I kind of understand the difference between a clone and a fork that we'll talk uh, next is that um, the clone is in your computer. Uh, but if the clone is in the GitHub itself, it's we call it fork. Um, so when you have it on your local computer, there's total disconnect uh, while you work, unless you explicitly take measures to synchronize it. Uh, but in a fork, because it's in inside GitHub, these repositories somehow have some knowledge of each other. So you could um, um, uh, like up, if if you if the if the upstream, which means the where we co copied uh, the 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 repository from, if there's an update, it could um, it could inform GitHub inform that it has happened. Um, and in addition, issues. Uh, so when we uh, talk about issues a little later on, uh, these issues could be referenced from your fork. So there is some kind of a connection because it's in the same place, same cloud, there's more connection between the copy that we make in the cloud than the copy we have in our laptop. Does that make sense, Dania? Yes. Hmm. I just want to mention, I will uh, clone some uh, repository if there is some program I want to just run uh, with my data. So I sometimes I want contribute back. I just want to have that program with if that's a library or public repository, I will clone it and uh, do my work myself with this different that data, a, maybe. That's a very good point. So when we want your software, we, let's say if you want to compile it, uh, compile software on our systems, we clone it. And that is a very good example of uh, a clone, yes. And then um, when you uh, um, um, want to create uh, a repository, but you don't want everything, but you want to create something that looks like something else. So these forks and uh, clones, they could um, they could make entire copies. But um, don't worry too much, but if you, if you know a little bit, Git, I would also like to mention something that you could actually explicitly define how deep the copy is. For example, you don't have to copy all the branches. You don't have to copy all the commits. Um, so uh, we'll, I'll, I'll just to, uh, try to place the, some commands in the uh, the hexia documents later on. You have commands like depth. You know, you, you could define even in forking and cloning. You could also define uh, how much of how much how deep you want the copy to be. Uh, but in in when you when you don't want to like explicitly mention that, you could use something like a template, which means that the the example he, uh, given here. Uh, is the cookie cutter. So what is a cookie cutter, Danya? It, it has the same shapes of the cookies, I would say. Like I, oh, yeah. I can make cookies without cookie cutter, but if I want the same kind of pattern in my cookies, yeah. I will use this uh, cookie cutter. So I will get uh, the same shapes. Okay, so uh, what does this mean in Git world? Git world, you take... Uh, uh, a similar uh, kind of pattern in your repository. If you're taking from it from a template, you um, you get the repository you take to template. Uh, it will be similar, but the history will be flattened. Hmm. Uh, that's what I would say. But I think we will go through this. If you are working with a team, you will uh, take a, a template from our CR. Uh, collaborative 
workshop uh, uh, repository. Yeah. yeah. So, so we, we will, may, yeah, hmm. we will have it in uh, our exercise. But there is one question about uh, question number six. You want to take it? Uh, maybe we will come back to it when we have the exercise, but do you want to mention it, Sabri? Uh, what was that, Danny? Because I want to finish it in four or five okay. minutes now. But but uh, tell me if you can read me the question, we could uh, see what it is. I don't want yeah, to how now. to push us to local fork compared to synchronizing to the upstream source where you fork from? Is there a way to commit and push to the place one fork from? So uh, a good question, very good question. And it has become much easier to do that now, but we will we will demonstrate that a little later. Um, and then I would say that in as a question you could ask uh, if you don't know maybe you know one of our instructors or colleagues could ask as well. There's a command called squash. So that command we need to. It's good to understand when we uh, talk about templates. Uh, the command called squash. We could discuss a little bit in the hack and day. So here we get a, a copy. Uh, what if Daniel? Let's say we, we talked about different companies. Uh, you have something in GitHub, but you want to transfer it to GitLab. And you said in the morning that um, if you learn the concept, it's easier to move between uh, these things. Yeah. Uh, what, is it possible to move something from GitHub to GitLab? I assume so, yes. Yes, yeah. Uh, so for that, you could use um, commands like um, import. So it's, it's possible to import a GitHub repository to GitLab. But there might be functionalities that not no, that not be fully copied, um, and you know things like which which are like metadata like uh, issue uh, connections that might get uh, not copied, but they could also um, um, synchronize. Uh, because Danya, as we said in the morning, our main um, like attempt today is to learn by doing. So what we'll do is we go to an exercise. Would you be kind enough to maybe? Uh, take my screen and explain what we what, what we are planning to do, uh, and um, and the timing and a little bit about the exercises. Yes, I will try to uh, take over the screen. Um, so, yeah, is my screen looks okay? Um, so I had to stop my sharing now to uh, uh, Richard. Uh, should, is it safe for me to stop the sharing? Uh, can Dania just take it over without you stopping? Mm -hmm. Let me check. Uh, I am sharing uh, from my side. Uh, can you? Okay, then you maybe think? Sabre should stop. Has Zoom changed? Yeah, okay, there it goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. So we are going to prepare for the exercise, but you have had a lot of them in the last uh, 15 minutes, commit branches, pull request, uh, or merge request, uh, template, and everything. Don't worry, don't get overwhelmed. And we are going to really do the hands-on, and then we get the practice. Um, so now what we are going to do is we are going to collaborate. Uh, it, Last two days, uh, you did uh, um, your own repository I suppose, and you uh, you tried to fork or clone. So today is as a uh, team, we are collaborating on this uh, uh, code refinery workshop, uh, um, collaborative uh, workshop repository. So uh, if you are, uh, there are two ways to participate in this exercise. One as a team. And you, I assume you are in an exercise room. And if you have a team member, a team a leader, that's great. If not, assign someone as a team leader so that they can create a template for you to collaborate. So uh, what we are going to do is, uh, if we are in a team or an individual le learner, we will contribute to a repository via a pull request that Sabri mentioned. Uh, pull request, I would say, is the way to communicate between um, pull and push are some words I would uh, use to communicate and pull request is suggest changes. And someone, as Sabri mentioned, someone uh, will review it and accept it so that your changes are there in the repository. That's what we are going to do that. So if you are in a group, uh, if you have a team leader, uh, 
there are some work for the team leader to do is uh, only one person. If you don't have a team leader assigned, uh, one person can take the role and create a template uh, from here. We have this um, screenshots here and you can create the template template from use the template and then add everyone in your group in that repository. So you will have a, a repository under, when you create a template from this uh, repository, you will have one repository under your namespace as a team leader. Then what you have to do is, uh, other team members have to give the user, uh, give their username to the team leader, and the team leader should give access to your team members to the repository, and then you have you are able you will be able to contribute so that's the one preparation as a team leader you have to do and i will come back to you about a little bit more uh, about it but please uh, create a template first then we have many individual learners that's uh, we are um, here what are you are going to do is you are collaborating with us so we are a collaborator and there are two uh, repository. One is not recorded and recorded. If recorded that what we will show on the stream. And if you don't want to um, show your usernames and things on uh, stream, you use the not recorded one and recorded one is for those uh, we will show on the stream. But the first thing is you have to have an access to this repository. That's what we were mentioning in the beginning that please uh, ask for access and we will give you access. Then we, you are the team member of this repository and you can collaborate. That's what as a team uh, individual learner, uh, if, you are want, if you want to do this exercise, you have to do if you already haven't done it. So yeah, if, if you did that, um, when you accept, you will get an uh, email notification. And on this uh, same email, you have a, um, GitHub know about uh, your username. So you will uh, need to accept it. Then only you become part of the uh, collaborative repository. So just uh, give a, send an access request. Then we, you get an email notification. You have to accept it. And there was something more. It's both for the team leaders, uh, teams, and also for the uh, individual learners that you are supposed to unwatch um, this. If I can go to my GitHub and you see that there are there is an I icon with watch, you can click on the participating and mentioning. Otherwise, if you have it, it's all activities, there will be more emails uh, coming to you. Um, it might be overwhelming for you. And I, do uh, you uh, think that is a good idea to have a all activity uh, tick mark, Sabri? Do you... um, yeah, so the, um, because we because there might be a lot of learners, we are doing a lot of, um, uh, like many people are joining at the same time, there might be overwhelming. So what you recommended is, is better. Yeah, so if, if, if that you can do as a, a team lead, a team also you can uh, mentioning the participating and mention that then you will get notified when uh, your threat is, there is an activity on that you are involved in, or you uh, someone mentioned you on one of the issues or some uh, or pull request or something. So we uh, expect that you uh, tick only the participating and mentions. Otherwise, it's not a problem, but you will get a lot of notification. That's why this is recommended. So these are the setup we are expecting um, for you to check. Uh, before that, but uh, when you are added, I wanted to give you some information about the background, what we are going to do about it. This is the recorded repository that we are going to show you on screen. Um, so the, if you go to the settings option, there is collaborators and teams. Stream exercise participant is where we add all of you who, yeah, who request access to this repository. And I will 
change the role is the default role is read. So we will. So keep... Dania, uh, before you uh, when I go, the, you you show that settings menu how to come in. So if if you if you are, if you are working on a smaller screen, this might be hidden. So you might have to zoom out or zoom in. Uh, uh, sometimes the menus could be hidden, but it, but those are there. Yes. Yeah. A good point, Sabri. And uh, that's one reason my I I am not uh, I'm a bit zoom out because I wanted to show the settings part. So the default role is read because, but we wanted everyone to uh, collaborate, all these members and the stream exercise participants. And uh, that's, we have 44 members now. So if you haven't done it yet, you can give it uh, access. It, this is something uh, the team leaders also should do. When they accept uh, members, they have to give the right access to the members. So go to settings and collaborates and and teams, then you find this, uh, your members and give right access. It's default, it will be read access. And uh, that uh, the other point is um, you have to protect your main branch. So you have to create a rule for uh, your, we already create one rule for our main branch. Uh, you can edit it and th what it means is uh, you cannot push, uh, forcefully push changes to it. So you have to um, have a pull request before merging it to the repository so that uh, the maintainers or uh, other people can review the changes and approve it and then merge it. That's So otherwise, uh, if main branch is not protected, uh, anyone can push changes directly to the main branches. Uh, that's a, not a good workflow when you collaborate together. Uh, anything you want to add, Sabri? Uh, yeah, do you explain it very well? So the the main branch or the master branch, some uh, sometimes it's called. This is uh, or um, in in some companies they have this uh, production branch uh, where the where the actual product uh, goes out. So there are some branches that are protected. People can't without un, without anybody else knowing just make a modification. So when you protect it, um, other people must be aware. Uh, you know, must be made aware uh, in order to have this accepted and integrated. So it's it's become a, like a team awareness uh, protocol rather than so kind of policing things. You know, it's 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 not like um, uh, making things difficult, but it is to make sure that any all changes go through some review process. Yeah, good. Uh, this is uh, we have already done this for you who. Those who, uh, those who are individual learners and participating with us. But uh, the team members, uh, if, uh, if you're working with a team, the team leader are ex uh, is expected to do this uh, on their repository. So we are working on this workflow exercise recorded version on stream. And the individual learners, uh, they don't need to do anything. We already have done it. But uh, if you are working with a team, the team leader or the responsible person who would create the template from uh, the code referring um, repository, you are expected to protect your main branch and also give right access to your uh, collaborate, collaborators. Yeah. So I think uh, we have uh, the setup mentioned. And then after you have done this setup, that's what we are going to do is we are going to collaborate. We have all these terms that explained, but you can find if you create the commit locally, how to do that and uh, everything is linked in the exercise part. So you can, if you don't remember things, that's okay. You can go back and see that what we are expected to expected you to do this during this exercise is that um, you open an uh, issue where you describe the changes you want to make, for example, on this uh, uh, for the individual learners, you can create uh, an issue here and then uh, create a new branch from there and make changes in, in your branch, commit there and push your new branch to the repository you are working on. So, so, so Dania, when you, uh, when you said an issue, um, you explained this. So I'm just trying to iterate it just to make sure yes. that people understand it. People could work on um, three places now, isn't it? So they could work on our uh, centralized workflow recorder where yeah. they, their names will be visible. And then they could work on centralized workflow, you know, not recorded version where 
they'll be not be shown in our videos or they will work on the repository their team leader creates so they have to select where they work and then the issue should be created in that location is that correct yes uh, so, yeah, yes, uh, for those individual learners, cre uh, you create an issue on this uh, uh, workshop exercise recorder or non recorder according to your preferences. And it uh, suggest what you want to change and then create a branch, make the changes and push the branch, push your new branch uh, to the repository you are working on. Uh, then open a pull request after pushing your branch. Uh, then uh, you can uh, see somebody else uh, re, uh, push uh, pull, pull request there. You can review it if you have enough time. Um, and then we will come back and uh, we will review it together here as well on the stream. At least um, we expected so, to do that until now, step five. Okay, so when you create a branch, uh, Dania, there could be different ways to do that as well. Maybe people can do it in the GitHub itself. Yes. Uh, they could use you know VS Code. They could uh, clone it and create a branch. So there could be multiple workflows people will follow. So there's no exactly one way to achieve this. Um, but the the concept that we are going to learn is to open the issue and make your changes in the branch, not in the main branch, because yeah. now the main branch is actually so protected. So wherever that uh, you are going to work on the terminal on the uh, web. Uh, on on uh, ID um, like integrated development environment like some uh, other program, we could follow this the, the same things. Yeah, uh, and maybe Dania, it's better to create a new file. I, I, I mean, like a new recipe than editing uh, an existing file uh, because multiple people might uh, edit it. So it's it's it, that that's a good concept to learn if you know a little bit um, git. But in order to learn today's concepts about contributing. And maybe we could um, try to avoid a little bit uh, complications like um, conflicts, for example, which 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 okay okay to happen. Like you know, those are good concepts in Git, but after, while we learn um, the the basics, it's better to maybe create a new file. What do you think? Yeah, uh, but yeah, I I really like if someone ch changes something also. But that's a good uh, thing if you. Uh, want to review and add a new file is a good thing uh, but uh, in reality you will have sometimes um, some conflict but the best part is if you create an issue and you describe the changes you want to uh, make and if you are working on it assign it to yourself so then the other people know that you are working on it so mention so the... it but we will come back to it how to show it after the exercise but mm -hmm. now we expect uh, at least until step five in the next 20 minutes. What do you think, Sadri? We will give a 20 minutes exercise time. Yes, 20 minutes and we'll have like a poll. If you want five minutes more, it's okay to take it. But when yeah. you went in the, in the in the shared document, we will ask whether you are finished or not. If yeah. many people want more time, it, it's okay. You know, we can be a little flexible because exercise are the most important thing. Uh, yes. We'll do that. And and Danya, one thing is now we, we are, we're going to break for exercise, which means that, that we are going to stop talking and the learner is supposed to do the exercise and there will be some microphone silence. Yeah, and actively contribute to this collaborative document uh, and let us know how it goes. That's very important for us to get your feedback. Yes, uh, maybe we could uh, write the exercise time, uh, 20 minutes until... Uh, um, until 10 here at least yes, yes please yes. May, uh, yeah please also mention our colleague uh, who's editing it that if if they want more time please ask so it's it's no point like rushing or like doing it halfway um yeah yeah so 20 minutes is is the sort of target but if you want a little bit more we can adjust uh, yes. and dania i think we should give them uh, some time now to wrap this around yeah. the, and then um, um do the exercise and we'll see you on the other end in that case do you okay. want to keep your screen shared, Dania, or do you want uh, somebody else to take it? Give it to Richard, probably. Share the notes. Yes, I'm ready to do that. Thank you. Say bye when you're ready. Bye.
Yes, um, welcome back. Um, I see that most of you have um, done uh, the exercise and we have received a lot of pull requests. Um, Dania, what we do now is that we have to discuss the answers a little bit and also the, the questions in the shared document. Uh, first, we shall have a break now. Um, I mean, break means, you know, you should stop working and walk around and maybe, you know, have some coffee or tea. Uh, and then we'll uh, we'll be back. How long uh, should we take, Dania? Ten minutes ten, break. Ten minutes. Okay. Yeah. So we're going to break for um, ten minutes, uh, and then we'll meet here again uh, to discuss. Yes. So see you in ten minutes. Welcome back, um, Dania. Did you have some rest, a break, or were you working? Uh, yeah, I took my break. Okay. Um, so, Dania, um, before I, I go into this, um, the request, the, the reviewing the pull requests, uh, I forgot to show that uh, this insight. So, that's something very exciting to see some time. So, under insight, you have something called the network. Here, it will show uh, what's going on in a graphical view. So these are the people who are these different colors uh, are like different branches, um, and they and then they work. For example, this yellow back branch. Uh, let me make sure that I'm in the uh, recorded version. Yes, I'm in the recorded repo. So this yellow change now incorporated into the main branch, white one. So the green one also here. So the purple one is also here. Uh, so the yellow and the purple are not the same because they are two different recipes. But both of them are now in May. Uh, and when we, once we accept pull requests, uh, this one is not accepted yet. So this will also go back into the production. Um, so Daya, um, our aim is um, you know, to contribute to a repository that you have um, um, access to, but not without modifying the uh, main branch. So a pull request was sent. Uh, as you described, and people have sent the pull request, and I have sent the request as well. I, I see that you have also sent it. Um, I'll, I'll just give a quick glance of what is next. So that is the code review uh, that we'll uh, um, um, talk a little li later. Uh, but Danya, while we are here in this exercise, we'll talk a little bit about the review as well, and then summarize later on. Is that okay? Yes, and I just want to say thank you to the, all the um, pull requests as well as all the issues created. That was very good to see. And we will discuss some of the questions here as well, Sabri, that I suppose we will have time. Okay, okay, let's uh, do that. Is there anything very uh, interesting to take first? Very important. Uh, all these are, I see an answer, okay. Um, so there are some technical questions. Uh, our colleagues, um, do you see anything that we should discuss here? Okay, working in uh, VS Code. Okay, so this is also like very specific technical uh, question that has been answered. Yeah. And there are uh, some question about uh, where mm -hmm. can you add uh, that's also answered fixes mm -hmm. that we will show. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. So so if, if you this happens uh, sometimes you clone it and you start working on it, uh, and then you realize you're in the main branch. So the um, the answer given by our colleague is to. Um, yeah, so the two, two, two things are given. So I like kind of the second way that because you are not uh, send your request yet, although it is your main branch, you could create a branch from that main branch and send it to the pull request. Um, and then, um, you know, the if, if you send only the branch that you want uh, to be evaluated in the pull request, uh, it will not make a difference. You could also reset and uh, do again, yes. Uh, VS Code, uh, to be honest, uh, Dania, I, I don't use regularly. I know how it works. So um, if there's any questions, we need some help from our colleagues to um, uh, 
with that. And if you see in the uh, our documents, we have these tabs. Um, for example, this VS Code and this command line. So we give the give the like the side by side comparison. So if you show something in the command line, it shows how to do it in VS Code. It doesn't mean that you have to do it in VS Code and command line. You can select uh, which you want to follow. Yeah. One thing uh, I want to mention is if you are uh, working on command line and VS Code, you have to authenticate with your SSH key to push the changes. Otherwise, uh, you will have permission issues. Do you want to comment on that, Sabri? Um, um, can, can you discuss a little bit, um, Dania? So I... if, if you are working on command line and you push your changes to the repository, if your SSH uh, authentication is not right, you will mm. not be able to push the changes to the repository. Yes, yes. So I think if they have set up the keys, it should be okay. Um, if you face such an uh, issue, please uh, ask, ask here and we'll try to solve this for you. Yeah, two things you need to have. You need to have a permission to push it to this uh, collaborative uh, repository where, where you have to be a collaborator mm -hmm. to push the changes from your local uh, command line. And yes. the other thing is you have SSH uh, setup. Mm. So, okay. So uh, um, I see that somebody got uh, this error as well, which means that they are not requested that uh, access issue. They are not open the issue that we discussed. So they had to open an issue asking access. Um, then, uh, and then uh, another thing is, it doesn't matter really uh, what you call the branch, uh, but for myself, uh, when the, the pull request I sent, let's see if I can find it. Um, I, I used, um, you know, the, the branch I used, I used my name in front and some indication because it's easier for me to find and maybe it's easier to locate uh, with that. Uh, so um, the, the default, the, the name that was used is that unfinished work, new branch, something. Um, the branch name doesn't really matter, but it, it, it should kind of indicate what, uh, what this is about. Uh, then shall we go through the, the um, your pull request, Dania? Are you ready? Yes, and I have added one more person to the reviewer, and I got a nice comment on that, but you can review again, Sabri, and okay, accept okay. it. Um, where is it? Your 31, was it? Yeah, it would hmm. be a chia seed pudding. Okay, so I think it's close, maybe. Okay. Um, let's see. Open. I'll, I'll just try to get it with the number because I think it's, it's the your other random reviewer. Yeah. Okay, it's merged. So yes. now, Dania, we are in a predicament. So we are we have like an unplanned event now. It's been accepted, so I can't um, you know I I could open it and do it. But would you like to take my screen and review my pull request instead? Yeah, that I can do, Sabri. Yeah, when you're ready, just grab it. Okay. It's not a random person, maybe it's one of our learners. So thank you for yeah. doing that. Yes, <laughs> and thank you for the comment. That's what something we were this going to discuss. Uh, where yes. is your pull request, uh, Sabri? Uh, my think... pull request. Sapri needs to stop screen sharing now. Okay, so I will stop and my request is 16, pull request number 16. Sorry, the, the, the issue 16, pull request 26. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I see you made some changes and from your pull request, I said made it sweeter. And mm -hmm. there is fixes 16 and 26. Mm -hmm. You created some uh, issues, I assume. Let, shall yes. we go to the issues just to see that what is it? Or yes, you please. want to? Uh, no, uh, you could go to the issue. And before that, um, um, like what I would like to mention that we should have actually mentioned. So this is public. Uh, and um, we were supposed to be, you know, follow the code of conduct and um, you know, make sure that what we type here and what we send is, you know, ethically correct and not um, sort of um, um, 
breaks those rules. So uh, I hope you all you already knew and you did that. Um, um, so um, sorry, we should have mentioned that before to be considerate about this being shown on the internet. Uh, yes, I opened an issue. Why why is it needed to open an issue, Dania? Why, what what do you think is the? Oh, I was just wanted to see what what you are going to fix it. I can ch check the file changes mm. and see and so, but maybe uh, what is what was the issue? If uh, so the um, issue the reason I opened the issue, Dania, is that uh, to inform the the developers or the uh, the people who are involved that I'm working on it. Yeah. One thing that could happen is, let's say I'm going to suggest this thing, but it's not necessarily in the plans or that doesn't necessarily fit the, the main repository or the main developer's plan uh, or the team's plan. So I don't want to work, work on something for a long time and then send it and then just to say, you know, this doesn't fit. So start early before even like making this first change, open an issue, say that, you know, I have this idea. I'm going to um, start working on it. So that uh, that has uh, two maybe more more advantages. But one or two advantages are the one is people will know that I'm working on it. If somebody really think it doesn't work, they should mention it. And other thing is if another person, uh, if another developer, another colleague planning to do the work, that person could collaborate instead of you know starting on their own thing. So now it is well informed. Okay, the issue is here. And this will also create some metadata about what we're going to do. So later on, this will remain forever. So it will be closed, but it will be there. So in later on, you could um, come and check, you know, what, what things happen in a, in a chrono chronological order. You know, this was submitted. There was some, were, were there any changes who uh, Accept the pull request. In addition to the pull request, there will be some documentation or a paper trail, we call it, you know, the issue. So the issue was open. Yes, then. Uh, yeah, that was I the and one thing I can add is that you can uh, open an issue if you find something is wrong or something is there and you are not working on it, but let your uh, other members know that there is an issue. So you don't need to assign it to yourself, but if you find something uh, needs to change, there is something uh, we can fix. You don't need to fix it. Someone else can fix it to let that there is an issue. So that way also you can open an issue. It's not necessary that you need to work on that issue that you open. Yes, and also the word issue, uh, it doesn't really mean something broken. It, it could be an improvement. Uh, so on the GitHub world, we have issues. Uh, in the GitLab world, if you are working GitLab world, you have issues and incidents. You know, there are slightly different ways to uh, indicate what you're doing. The, the the main thing is the word issue does not mean that you know there's a problem. It could be an improvement, it could be some new feature, it could be something broken as well. So it's not just for reporting bugs. Go yeah. ahead, Dania. And I could show that uh, the issue that you are having a sweet, sweeter version of a sweet pumpkin pie. I assume that there is a sweet pumpkin pie somewhere and you want to add a sweeter version of that. Yes. So what do you think about this? Like, is it enough information here? No, uh, unfortunately, I, I have to assume many things here. Yes. Mm -hmm. So if uh, one thing I can ask you, if, uh, if I see that you you haven't assigned it here, Seth, but if you want to work on it, you can assign to yourself here. Mm -hmm. And there are some labels we could add. If it is bug documentation mm -hmm. enhancement, I assume that we you are assume, supposed to enhance something already there. Yeah. So this is also a good way to uh, add here, assign labels and uh, et cetera. And if I don't find things, uh, maybe provide a bit more context on this. I We can have a conversation if it is not, if you are not working on it also, but on an issue, uh, as a collaborator, we can have a discussion and find out a common ground to further develop this problem or uh, improvement or anything. So uh, now you found my issue, and you know it's it's, it's you know um, the the quality of the issue is not that good. It's not descriptive, um, so that will be my more mentioning. And you found that it's better to add a label as well. Yeah. So could you add a label for me, a suitable label, so it will be the next person who visits the issue has a better. 
Yes, and I just no, want yeah. to mention uh, that uh, this label is different. For projects, you can edit mm -hmm. labels. You can add labels according to your project needs. So mm -hmm. you can add uh, like in progress or uh, whatever you want. That There is an option to edit labels. But, but this is already mentioned some labels. So I will use an enhancement. Maybe I will ask uh, Sabri uh, to put give a more uh, context to this. I can mention uh, him here. So yep. Sabri will get notified uh, whenever I mention and comment it here. So we can have yep. a conversation. Um, and then one more thing that might be a little confusing is that the, the question 21, um, mm -hmm. the, or, um, the question that asked about this uh, permission issues, um, Opening an issue will not give you permission on this repo. So what I mentioned in the in the beginning about opening issue was there was this repository that we were giving permissions, adding you to a group. So you had to open an issue there so we can manually take your username and give you permission. So opening an issue in this repo does not mean you get permission to push. So just a clarification. Yeah, good point, Sari. So we, we can have a conversation here, but just let us go to your pull request yeah so i can see that you have one commits and mm -hmm. one file changed shall we go yes um see you know um so i, I purposefully made it you know extremely sweet so maybe it doesn't fit maybe you could um, see whether that's okay and i could change uh if, if it doesn't so this is now we are actually in the, in the reviewing process, which is the next uh, topic that we're going to um, talk about. But we'll start uh, from now itself. So how do you um, how do you make a suggestion, Dania? In addition to being polite and uh, being considerate. Yeah, I mostly I see that this is all these plus signs. That what means there is only addition to these mm. uh, changes. Uh, normally, if there is plus lines, I will not have much to look at it. That's how I work because it's. Uh, so but if you... if if you have some changes here, then you will see that there is a uh, red, um, red color rather than a green color, right? Um, that's a good point, uh, Danya. So if it is an existing file, and if there's a difference, the things added will be green, things deleted will be red. But because this is a new file that Git didn't know before, everything is green. Yeah, you can means, see that uh, yeah. here, plus 37 lines added, there is no mm. line changed. No change. This is uh, something, uh, I will look into it first. Mostly there is something changed. Mm. Mm. Then what about uh, line 17? What do you think in this file? Uh, 40 cup sugar. Yeah. So, um, yes. Yeah, I will click on this plus sign or uh, on this line and I will, uh, okay, yeah. It's too sweet, doesn't it? <laughs> mm -hmm. Then when you, um, yeah, so just, um, yeah, send me the, the, that when you click the button, I will also get the message that you inform that. Yeah, so I see that you're using like maybe words like maybe could, you know, um, the the feedback should be, you know, it should be, um, um, you know, positive in a way that, you know, the changes are sent, uh, sent but it, it should start kind of like a negative conversation saying, you know, this is bad, can we change it? But, you know, you could use the same thing. Uh, you could convey the message that it has to be changed in the polite language. Yeah. And I see that you are... Um, being extremely uh, polite. Nice. What does B, what does B tab? Oh, by the way, means? yeah, oh, okay. The, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's, okay. Uh, thanks it. for the recipe. And uh, then mm -hmm. I will add this uh, uh, single comment or start review. Where, where, where do you do? What do you do? Um, so you could start the review. So, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then uh, let me check uh, whether I got that uh, message. Um, let me see. Yes, you have done that. 
um, slight delay on my part. I'm just still waiting. Okay. Mm. Yes, I still not got it. Uh, but uh, but until 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 that um, that um, my my side refreshes. Um, let's say if you want to make a change directly, how would you do that? So I I I'll, I'll I will answer this the the, the forty cup sugar in a moment. But let's say if you want to uh, change, for example, salt amount, is it possible as a reviewer for you to suggest a change directly in in, in addition to asking me? Yeah, I can directly suggest that for that I usually go to the branch. Mm -hmm. and uh, um, do the changes but uh, there is the yeah go ahead Sabri yeah so I mean um, the uh, during the review process mm -hmm. um, that let's say if you want to change something you, you, you don't have to necessarily like open a new pull request or yeah. close it so that's what you are trying to say maybe yes yes oh yeah mm -hmm. that's right so you can yeah, if I uh, if I'm a collaborator I I have this uh, permission to edit Sabri's branch mm. that he put, uh, that's this pull request. You can see that main from Sabri Sweet Pumpkin. So I can go and edit that. So I will have the commit there. And then yes. the pull request will be updated accordingly. Mm. There is no need for me to change anything there. Um, yes. Uh, another thing we can do in the, in the, um, 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 the interface itself. I, I I I see that because I'm not getting this because you are not finished your review. Yeah. Uh, maybe you could uh, we could um, yeah uh, in that yes with yeah if you if you can finish the review and make a commit without approving it yeah then I might get the message. So that is also a good thing that we so that until you finish it I I don't get the message just by answering that question. So I can um, request change. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So you could submit that. Okay. Now I got it. So I'm going to. Uh... Meanwhile, I will check if there is some questions that we need to answer. Um, yeah, so then um, I I reply to that. Um, did you did you see my reply? Maybe a refresh of the pull request itself. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so then somebody else has uh, mentioned that as well. So yeah, what that's... I'm saying here is that okay, you know, thank you indeed. You know, you, you found it, but I'm on a flight. You know, this is there's internet on the flight. So let's see, I replied and whether you could change it for me. So the way you know on the web interface that we could you do uh, this easily as a reviewer is is that if you go back to the file itself. Um, if you go to that 40, uh, the number 17, maybe on the on the last, uh, oh, yeah, yes. Oh. Okay. Uh, so and when you click that, what happens? Nothing happens, that's uh, strange. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's uh, that's uh, another, another good um, uh, catch as well. So what I will do is that maybe, if you, if you go further down, what do you see? Yeah, so it's other part of this file. So what I will do is I will uh, resolve this yeah. conversation. You want to take over the screen? No, 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 no. We we have, we had to find it uh, how to uh, do it properly because um, it, it's not happening as I expected. But we'll figure it out. Um, if you refresh it again, okay. Now if you go to plus again, um, the yeah. Yeah, and you see that uh, the you have yeah go go uh, don't, don't uh, not that one the plus. 
and then uh, after write you have the button called review after yeah. that you have this plus sign you go to write again after review you find a small button if you click that you could actually change from 40 to 4 if you yes you could uh, space and then you could uh, start the review or, or like you know add, add you could yeah. actually add the uh, comment there yeah. Yeah, and then you could finish up the uh, finish up the the review process. You could actually approve it now because now you've changed it. Yes. Then, then now it, now what, what happened is that without even going to the terminal, you manage so you managed to find some uh, issue and you informed with me in a very polite and very positive way um you know the positive feedback and then uh, you know i couldn't change it for some reason and then you as a reviewer you managed to uh, do the change without even making a branch or anything uh, you were in the same branch you were in the same pull request same narrative you know the same um, the, the 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 discussions going on the issue would be updated we did that yeah. there yes and so I, could... I need to commit the suggestion correct And you could have a commit message there uh, saying, you know, this was actually uh, Sabri who tried to make it, you know, sick, uh, not sick, um, like um, too, too sweet. Um, so we had to uh, um, reduce uh, the sugar amount and or maybe it was a typo. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's your amount. Yeah. And then commit changes. So one thing I want to show you here, earlier mm. it was only one commit, and mm. I did change uh, add this uh, suggestion commit. You can see that there are two commits. Mm. Um, let's go and see that. So first one uh, commit Sabri mentioned, and in that commit Sabri mentioned the issue as well that he was working on. And then I, fix, uh, I uh, committed the suggestion that I made. Okay, mm -hmm. and shall we go back and merge it? Yes, please. So do you have you have mentioned two issues here? Mm -hmm. And let's see what happens when we merge the pull request to the issue. Have I mentioned two issues? I think. Uh -huh. Aha, yes. That's actually a typo. So let let okay. before before you before you close that, let me edit that uh, title a little bit. Um so you can do that with the edit. Uh, no, actually, um, it is actually the um, yeah. So yeah, so that's a good point. So it is not actually referring to two issues. That means that it is the pool request number twenty six, oh, and yeah. in the title, in the title, I have uh, mentioned the issue. Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good point. Yes. Yes, and I reviewed and. Maybe what what you usually do, you say thank you message, and I see the Radovan all the time saying thank you, and I him him yes, something. Uh, he, yeah, so he's too polite. So, um, yeah, we could mention that. Okay, now it's solved. Thank you. Yes, uh, and there are some questions in the HackMD the the, the shared document. We'll come back come to that a little later. I see yeah. a lot of discussions going on with our colleagues. Yeah. Okay. Confirm. Yeah, that's we will come back. Mm -hmm. Now it's done. Yeah. So it's done, and maybe we could just delete the branch as well because otherwise we'll collect a lot of unnecessary branches. Yes. So that's done. It's gone. Deleting the branch doesn't lose any information because everything in that branch is now integrated into the main branch. Yeah, I just want to check what happened to the issue you created. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's closed. Uh, if you click on the closed one and uh, click on number 16, uh, yeah, take one issue and type 16 at the end in the URL. Maybe it's easier to, uh, yeah, any, any, uh, anything and end, at the end type 16. Yeah, because it's a bit difficult for me. Uh, with okay. My uh, sharing. Ah, okay. okay. Uh, um, and let me see. Closed. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's further down now under, under close. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will. That's a, okay. 
Yeah, you have one closed tissue. Yes. Made it switch. So, so yeah, I, I filter it. Yes, you, that's a good. Uh, okay, can you can you briefly explain what how you found that again? Yeah, I can. Uh, so we have issues, and I was try, uh, trying to see if subdis issue is uh, here, and I was not able to find it. So I, um, I know that Sabri was created with the issue, so he is the other. So I clicked. Uh, his name and I see there is no open issue on uh, under his name and one closed issue. So this is the one I found it like that. Mm -hmm. You can use uh, GitHub uh, for many other um, like this, but it's not necessary that you need to find everything today. This mm -hmm. is to for you to have a hands on and uh, we will. Um, I think when we do things only, we will find many ways. I, I think I have to find many, many functions on the GitHub yet because I use GitLab main, uh, every day. Sometimes it's a bit difficult uh, to find it here, but that's mm -hmm. okay. Uh, mm -hmm. It's the matter of time that you practice. Yes. And you can also see in the issue, Dania, the, the commit message, the, 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 the commit that you did, the hash for the commit, and also the merge request, everything is linked. So you have some paper trail here as well. Yeah. Yes. Okay. I think uh, that um, sort of um, summarize uh, what we uh, were like planning to do uh, for that part of the exercise. Uh, shall we have a look at the, the shared document as you add it and see? Let me check our chat to see whether our colleagues found out something. Yes. Um, so there was supposed to be a mic option like yesterday, and I didn't see that. So. Uh, question number 20. Can you ask uh, what was it about? Let's see. Uh, our colleague Samantha is uh, mentioning about it. Okay. In reaction. How to push and pull from local repository to GitHub, mm -hmm. maybe. Okay, so I think um, what I will do is um, I can I can um, show that because we were doing on the on the um, terminal lot, uh, sorry, on the web page because uh, we which want to make it a little simple, but I can show how to. Um, do that on the terminal if that makes sense. How are we on time, uh, Daniel? I think we have almost 18 minutes till lunch break. Okay. So is the next uh, one we are starting after the um, lunch? Yeah, but I would like to discuss a little bit on the review process and mm. uh, things uh, would mm. be nice uh, that um, we talk a little bit about the review. So mm. do you expect that if we collaborate only the owner or admin who review or how do you explain the reviewing? Because I reviewed it it's and, and I just want to say that all, all of you can review each other's pull request and comment it yes. just like that. It is not any hierarchy here. And uh, this is, uh, we all are collaborators in a collaborating repository. So there is no uh, senior, junior, no uh, differences were uh, reviewing. And you can see that uh, what I was doing, um, you learn by reviewing many things. So actively participate in code reviewing, that's somewhere you can learn a lot and it should not be um, anything uh, role-based. On or any supervisor or anyone. Anyone should be able to, any collaborator should be able to review things and have a conversation. And one thing to make sure what I would suggest is to have a good uh, collaborative environment on your repository. That's being polite, what we said. Anything you want to add, Sabri, regarding that? Yeah, I think that's a perfect uh, explanation. Um, the um, um, one thing actually, like in 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 in, a, in companies, um, also like in the, in the working environments, uh, like we are, is that it's it's okay for a junior person to review. Let's say if there's a new colleague, that person could uh, review uh, experienced person's uh, commits as well. So that's also a learning experience. Um, so I set up my terminal. Um, 
yeah. uh, Dania. So I could just show the, these things because um, that's a very specific question about it. Yes. I'll take over the screen. Um, yeah. Uh, let me fix my terminal a little bit. Uh, is my terminal font visible? Is it enough or should uh, I make it a little bigger? Um, okay. I am I, sharing, I, so. Yeah, Daniel, yeah. I need to stop. Okay. Yeah, okay. After Daniel stops, I do that. So the, so the question is that this pooling and uh, pushing and the, the, the terms that we used, um, we used the, the browser to show you uh, the, the setup, so we didn't uh, come to the terminal, but what we can do is that, you know, I'll, let me adjust my screen a little bit. Um, so I don't want to show my desktop, yeah. Um, so this is the repository we have. So here, um, I go to the, the recorded one because I don't want to show the, um, the, the private one, um, centralized uh, template for centralized uh, um, the workflow. So this is the, um, the exercise repo that uh, we, we, we had. So that's the issue. So uh, I open a, uh, another issue. Um, um, I'll be a little quick, but these are not good comments. Uh, we have to... Um, So I opened an issue um, and then submit it, but that we do it in the, uh, Git, the GitHub interface, not on the terminal. So that's done. Um, and then I go to the code. I, I take the SSH and I clone it, copy. Uh, and I could also show one more thing here is that I already uh, cloned that repository before. So I have something with the same name. So what I will do is I will clone it, but I'll give a new name. Um, new. So when you, are, when you are cloning it, you could uh, specify which name to give. If you don't do that, it will use the name of the repository. So I have um, two uh, folders now. So that is the cloning process. I got a copy down to my laptop. So I go to my um, new repository. And let me let me go up a little bit. So I have more real estate to show you. So I have these folders. Maybe I'll go to um, deserts. So I went to that desert and I'll check the branch. Git branch, these commands we learn. So I'm in the main branch. I will check the Git status. So status is clean. So there was the, the one other question was to accidentally um, start working on the main branch and what to do. Uh, so I will, I, I will imagine that, you know, I, I forgot to create a branch, uh, but I start working. Uh, let's see, I'll uh, copy the chickpeas recipe because I don't want to create a new one, new chickpeas. So this this is this simulates that I create a new file. Um, then I edit that. Um, yeah, let's make it true. Uh, and when you um, edit that, uh, my muscle memory opened the Vim um, editor, so it could be the editor of your choice that uh, we learned uh, yesterday. And now I I did something on the main branch, but there's still more time to create a new branch. So I ask it. Status, there is a um, modified file here, um, but I could still create git. Um, if you learn the command commands, the, the, the practice yesterday, you could do this in this in one command actually. I'm going to check out a new branch called um, I'll call it the piece. You know. With the, with the S to make it a little um, uh, funnier. Uh, then I'm in the new branch, get status. Um, so it says uh, that command was not found because I misspelled it, status. So a new file is still there. 
I will ask git branch. So I'm in the correct branch. Now I can commit. So I created the file while, while I'm in the main branch, but still there's room to uh, switch to a new branch. I will git add new this will learn. Then git commit with a message. This fixes issue 42. So I, I, I did that. So then I asked it status. Uh, again, wrong spellings. Status, now everything is clean. Uh, then what I can do is do that push. I pull first, you know, I got it down. Now I'm going to uh, push it again. Git push um, origin. So the origin is the the place I copied from. So there's a label given to that origin. I want to do it upstream. You know, it depends on your setup on your local computer, but this is safer to make mention that, you know, I had to print upstream and I'm going to send this branch and it will create the branch with the same name in the GitHub. So I use the push. Okay. Now, when that is done, you immediately see that somebody has uh, sent this. So that is the push. Now, again, we're going to hear the word pull. So we're going to send a pull request now in order to um, incorporate it. So we pulled it to our local computer, we made the changes, we pushed it, and then we're going to send compare pull request. Um, then I will uh, send fixes, okay. I'm going to get it here. Uh, new SFP. Um, uh, I think I spelled it wrongly, but I can check the spellings because Git is good at checking the spellings. Right. So now that that thing happened in the with the title will not happen now. Uh, with um, more details. Create a pull request. So we're seeing the pool, the word pool again, but in GitLab, you will see the merge word. So two different uh, uses of that, but this is a pool request and earlier was a pool. So that what we meant by push and pull. Um, so um, our colleagues, is that clear enough? Um, yeah, I think it, it, it answers um, the question. And what are you going to do next, uh, Dania? Are we going for a break or? We, we are supposed to have a lunch break, but do you want to take, we have some time left for that, but uh, do you want to take some question? Uh, yes, from... yes. Um, uh, you still, still see my screen, so I'm going to open the notes. <clears throat> Um, I'll hide the terminal so we don't need that anymore for the time being. Uh, maybe maybe I can show you one more thing before I close the terminal, Danya. Is that yes. um, you know now um, we mentioned that the disconnection, the clone. So now our local repository main branch is. Uh, I'll clear this. Uh, we are in the Git branch again i'm uh, typing wrong spellings i mean this my branch but if i go to git check out main main branch my main branch would not have the same recipe as um, um the, the 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 file i sent for example let's see was it in um yeah here check please but if you see the uh, the file, what was that name? I'll go back to my branch, you have to see. Um, so you see there's a new chickpea, it's not in the main branch. So what I should do is I should go to the main branch and do a git pull again. Git, git pull, origin, main, I'll uh, increase the, a little bit, so you see, yeah, what I'm going to do is get down for the changes to main, and then that command would bring down that change. So this is how you synchronize on, on the terminal. Yeah. 
Uh, just a comment on that. Uh, you have seen push and pull. Mm -hmm. That's something we use to communicate with the um, GitHub repository from the command line. But pull request is something different where you suggest mm -hmm. the changes. So yeah, it, sometimes it might be a bit confused. Yeah, you have pull and pull request. So pull mm -hmm. is the communication way. Pull request is uh, you are suggesting the changes to the repository. Yes. So we are actually asking the owner to pull from me. So I pull from the owner first. I push back, and then the pull request is 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 the is the request. Can you pull from me? So I I, I give you this. Pull it up. Um, so any other questions um, that we um, want to mention, let's see, about what type of files can be tracked, okay? Uh, uh, which question is about file tracking? Um, let's see, can, can somebody give me the number of the question? Twenty-nine, thank okay. you. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, word files. Yes, so the uh, the thing with the word files, Danya, and also the, the colleague who asked the question, is that the word file to the computer is not the word file the human sees. So there's a lot of metadata. So if you create a word file and if you try to look at it on a terminal, for example, with a less or a cat command, it will show so many things. Um, so it's possible to track it, but let's say a small change of making a um, text bold would change a lot. So um, it is not that convenient to track that. Um, but if you're using Word, then you know, you could use, you know, people ask whether they could use Git, you know, it's okay to use Git, you know, um, to um, to to have have it uh, version control. For example, you can go back into certain versions. So you don't necessarily need to um, like read the the code, the like the, 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 the bytes in order to do that, but you can't do a diff, for example. So let's say if, if I uh, have a word file and if I made a bold text, and I save it and commit it, the, the difference between the two commits, very difficult to see it's a bolding text, no bolding a character. So for that reason, you could use other version system that you know, Word is good at, for example, you know, Microsoft 365 or you know, uh, upload it to um, Google and Google Docs, you know, there are other uh, setups. Um, these really personal uh, opinion. So there could be many op opinions. So it's, it's better not to do that. But it's, you could do that, um, you know, technically. Yeah, and text files and all the code, uh, our script or Python, everything works very, quite well with the version control. Uh, Markdown is kind of a text file, but it has a specific, uh, temp, what you call speciality uh, with the headings and all other marking. Um, you can just have a small, uh, similar text files and readme files. Uh, those are simple text files. So, uh, and ASCII data sets, that's very good uh, with the version control. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see anything else. Um, commits in a conversation. Um, yes, so you could, um, yeah, so the, uh, this, is, this is actually a good question that we have an answer for that. Uh, so if you, how, to, uh, how to mention a commit, um, this is a good answer. Another way, like I would say, it, you have to think a little bit opposite way, when you think of like this, uh, you, you showed that, Danya, is that um, in, you, could, you could mention a commit, uh, but let's say if you're uh, um, referring to a certain commit and it's even better to um, be more specific. So you could specifically refer to the line that you are mentioning, or you could have this um, commit text. Let's, let's me go to the um, recorded version. And then when you see the uh, because my screen is little shrink, I have to find the, the, the commits. 
um, that hash number that you get the short number. So that Git is capable of figuring it out. So if you can copy that, uh, you know, copy to the mouse or right click or control C as mentioned, you could always uh, use that. Uh, but usually what we do is the opposite. So as I mentioned in the beginning, rather than mentioning a copying the commit to an issue, we um, we, issue, we we refer to an issue in a commit with a hash. Um, yes. So uh, I think Dania, we should go for the break now, the oh. lunch break. Yeah, um, I just want and... to mention thank you for all this push uh, pull request and creating the issue and actively participating uh, on the stream as well as I assume that you are you were participating as a uh, team. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have questions, please keep it coming. And next, uh, next, what we are going to do, Sabri, we are going to do ha have a forking exercise, right? After the lunch. Yes. Uh, but before the lunch, there's some technical issue that I need to solve with the director. Um, let's see. Um, is, is Richard still around or is, is Samantha around? Yes, okay. I'm here. So we are going for the break now, uh, Richard. Okay. Um, and then uh, let me say it's, it's mentioned. Yeah, maybe Samantha can help us to mention the break. Uh, I couldn't find it here still. It's until uh, an hour break, yes. right? Yeah. So. Uh, was it one hour, 15 minutes? How, how, how? One hour. Oh, no. One hour. Okay. Yeah. So we meet again. And, and yeah. So then um, have a break, have a great lunch. Um, and we'll meet afterwards. Uh, and we'll, we will work with the repository that you will not get access. How do you, how would you uh, contribute? Anything else, Danya, before you break? No, thank you. Okay, see you then. Welcome back. Sabri, did you have a good lunch? Or good yes, rest? yes, uh, just finished uh, my lunch and uh, get more ready for more Git as for dessert. Yeah. Okay, you will get some more dessert today for sure. Uh, thank you for uh, activity participating earlier. And this is uh, now we, we collaborated earlier in one repository. And do you know how to pull, um, how to create an issue and pull a uh, pull request and uh, how to record new code review? Do you want to comment on anything on that, Sabri, before we go for the next session? Um, no, I think uh, it's, it's all good. Some questions are answered. Mm -hmm. um, I think we can go for the next one. Yes. So now we are going to contribute changes to a repository that belongs to others. Earlier, you had write access to the repository where you contributed. And now uh, there are many, many open source repository that you might use and you might find some bugs or some improvement and you are not a member, you don't, you don't have right access and you want to contribute and how to do that. That's what we are going to uh, see. And Sabri will mention the exercise setup before we go for the exercise, but I just want to show you uh, how uh, uh, um, given an initial thoughts on it, how it works. So you, I will go to my repositories and I, you can see that I have a lot of fork. So when you want to contribute to someone's uh, repository where you don't have to access or you don't have the access, Sabri mentioned that that's uh, you fork it to your namespace, and you could see that I have any uh, repositories which I forked. I will just show you that uh, Jax, for example. So Dania, my... you mentioned uh, the term namespace. What does it mean? Yeah, that namespace here means it's under my namespace. That's a good question. I shouldn't have used that uh, new new terms. Uh, so uh, the actual repository, that the upstream repository is under uh, Google namespace, I would say. But when I fork it, it comes, it's under my uh, namespace. Is it to answer your question? Uh, yes, so this is, this is a copy of what Google has, but it's in, in your repository, you can edit and do whatever you want, but the Google will not see it. 
unless yeah. you explicitly ask. Yes. And uh, I just want to show you that this is what you see. That's what I forked. And uh, you could see that I forked from Google Jax. And if I want to contribute, what should I do? And I will go to this Google Jax, uh, the original repository. And there are issues. You could see the, uh, many issues. And it's an open um, repository. And I created what just like what we did when we were collaborating. So this is what we are going to do. And how to do it, uh, we will have this exercise set up. Um, and we will fork it from our code refinery, uh, rec forking recorded uh, repository, and we'll work on it. Where you don't have any right access, you will fork it and make changes and, and make a pull request towards the upstream uh, repository. Upstream means the original repository where you fork from. Is there something you want to add on that subject that the motivation? Or are you muted? Uh, can you hear me? Uh, sorry, then I just lost my uh, sound a little bit. Um, uh, what were you asking? Is there anything you want to add on it about the motivation of something? If um, uh, not, not necessarily. I think um, you, you explained it. It's it just that you can't edit because you are not part of that organization, and uh, it's they they will uh, unlikely that unless you are like a heavy contributor that you, you become a part of that um, uh, organization. And it's you don't have to be part of Google in order to contribute. So, I mean, not contribute, suggest contributions. So yeah. I think you made and, yourself uh, clear. Yeah. Yeah. And you could find uh, about um, all this, uh, your repository and your teams and your uh, under your namespace, which organization you were part of. So I'm, I'm not part of many and, and it's on GitHub. Uh, so that's uh, you could see that where which organization you are part of. Uh, but what we are going to do is we are going to um, contribute some changes to a repository. We don't have right access. You can read the repository, but you want to give uh, suggest some changes, and um, the maintainer or admin of the repository will review the changes. That's we are going to practice. And this is the way that open source software developed so much. So uh, this is something uh, we always want to contribute back, whatever we use it. Do you do that mostly, Sabri? Uh, I mean, I have contributed uh, for certain projects, uh, but you know, um, not much. Um, so one thing uh, I would like to mention is that um, um, so when you when you fork a repository, it could go stale. I mean, I see a lot of repositories here. Maybe they are not properly synchronized with the original version. Yeah, that uh, we will maybe come back, or you want me to show it now? How to synchronize with my original upstream repository? Or, uh, or... yeah, um, yeah. You, you as you are, uh, maybe maybe we can show that after the exercise. Okay. Yeah, you will see that if it is on sync or not. So I on um. You can see that I didn't look into it for for a long time, so I'm 794 commits behind. But uh, this is the option you can sync fork. Uh, but Sabri will show you later when uh, we do the exercise. Hmm. Shall we uh, go for the preparation for the exercise, or do we have any questions to take before that? Um... So there's this question about why fork instead of cloning. You yeah. Know, maybe we can touch up, touch that, touch that a little bit. Um, yeah. So um, a, a cloning will involve even if you fork. Um, so the um, um, if you clone directly from this Google's um, Jax uh, repository, you can make changes locally, but if you you can't send your changes back to Google, because then you'll be rejected, uh, rejected, rejected, which will say that you, have, you don't have right access. Because so you are not a collaborator there. Just yes, in the, in the teaching material, we have some screenshots of what exact message you get. Yeah. Because of that, you should make a copy in the cloud itself, you fork it in your namespace, and then clone it and work 
you know, make your modification and send the pull request where the fork. Yep. Okay, shall we go to the preparation of the exercise and uh, shall we have a hands on it? Yes, so I, I think it's, it's, we should go for the exercise. Mm -hmm. uh, I could explain that and my, my, I have a slight problem with the sound. Maybe I, if I lose my uh, um, voice a little bit, uh, you might have to explain if I'm, um, if you don't hear me. Yes. So I'm going to start sharing the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you could stop, then maybe my screen will show up. Yes, I see that. <clears throat> um, let's see one more time the questions. Yes, please keep the questions coming. And we are in this, let me go up very slowly. Um, this we did. And we, we move on to this lesson called how to contribute changes to repositories that belongs to others. So if, if others give you permission, that's fine. But this is how you would uh, contribute when you, do, you are not part of that organization. Uh, as with the previous exercise, there are two main uh, workflows here. The first flow, workflow is that you are part of a team. You know, as before, you are uh, in a group somewhere and you have a team leader who would um, uh, provide this um, uh, repository for you, uh, you know, created from our template and you will follow that uh, instructions uh, from your team. Uh, the other instruction is that you don't have a team, you're on your own and you'll be in our team, you know, me, Dania, and uh, the, the code refinement that we are going to show. So we have created that repository. It's called the, um, if you um, click this link, you'll be, you'll land in that repository. Uh, workflow exercises. Um, I actually need to show the um, one that is not recorded. Uh, central work flow recorded. Okay, so I had to show the one that is recorded. Um, the difference between the recorded one and the non-recorded one as before is that the recorded one will show up in our recordings. So if you don't want your names appear here, you should uh, use this one. Um, so you will uh, land in this repo. Um, so, um, uh, as before, we have like two main uh, workflows, uh, you know, how this works. And even in that workflow, you can, we have like three ways of working. So one is that you have your team, uh, your uh, team leader provides this uh, report to fork from, and you fork from that and you contribute. And you're on your own, you're following code refinery, you know, the, the, the fork that uh, the, the repo we created for you, you fork from that. Uh, if you if it's okay for you to show up your name in our recordings, you can uh, use the uh, repo that um, ends with the recorded. And if it's um, you don't want your name to show up, you should you, you should the one which does not have recorded at the end. You should use only one, and you could you could select and follow that procedure. Uh, and then, um, so. The, the idea is that, um, that you would um, be provided with this uh, repo that you would fork, you would make a copy in, in the cloud, but in, in, inside your own um, workspace or namespace. And then uh, what will happen is after you create that, you're going to contribute back something before you contribute back as we discussed before, you should open an issue and inform the developers that you're going to do that. So Dania, the issue, do we create it, create the issue in the organization uh, yeah. uh, repo or do I create it in the fork that I created? Uh, the upstream organization repository. That's where you are telling that there is some um, improvement or issues that uh, you want to, or you can mention, as I mentioned it earlier, that issues on this open uh, repository, you can create it even though you are not uh, working on it. And it will it would be always on the upstream repository, you need to create the issues if you want to contribute back to uh, changes to this, op like for example, JAX. I will go to the Google JAX, there I will create an issue. 
Yes. So you will create in the Google. Uh, so although you don't have right access to the repo itself, you can create issues. So that yeah. is where the Google people will say that is improvement is coming. Let's say you open an issue in your repo, they don't know about it. So the that communication never happens although in the cloud. Yeah. And one more thing, you here you don't need to ask for the access. So if we, when we were collaborating earlier, we asked for access. We added your username to our team and made every changes. So here you don't need to do that. Yes. So you don't uh, need to uh, do that. So here, um, let's say the centralized workflow uh, recorded exercise. Um, so depending on how your screen setup is, um, not every uh, menu will be visible. Uh, so there is a menu called uh, fork. Um, where is it? I can make it a little smaller and see whether it shows. Uh, as you can see here, I don't see it, but when I zoom out, I can see this fork repository. So um, this button, where you click, depend on the work, the, the path where you selected in the beginning. If it is you the if 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 you are in a small team, you should go to that small team's uh, repository and create for. And if you are in a code refinery, and if it's okay for you to your name to be visible in the recorded uh, version, you could create for. So when you click the fork button, you will be given option. So this is my um, like namespace or my Git repository, my organization which I am the only member, uh, and it will give this option. And you could also mention that copy the main branch only. You know, you don't have to copy all the branches. Usually, when you're working in uh, copying, forking from a very um, you know highly uh, active program, um, NumPy or Jax or PyTorch, or, um, you know, very active projects, or maybe the Linux compiler, uh, um, you would you don't want to copy everything. It will be a huge. Um, uh, repository with a lot of uh, commits and all. So here only the main and I'll create a fork. Um, and then the fork will be created. Um, so you should do that. So after the fork created, the workflow is as before. Now you clone from the, the copy you made, not from the original one. So um, the one that creates under your name. Uh, you uh, create a, a fork um then you clone it or you could if you want to edit in the github itself you can edit as well or if you want to clone it to your um local terminal then you clone it then you would create a branch and then you make the change or the suggestion or the improvement and then you will um add that to that um a new branch and then you will commit when you're committing you can mention the issue as before but this time you are mentioning an issue which is not in the repository that you are pushing to first. So you, you are referring to an issue that's upstream, which means this issue is not something in your uh, repository, but it's uh, it will be it will make sense when we uh, merge it or, or, or like accept the pull request in the in the original repository. Um, yeah. And yes. Just there, uh, these are the steps you want to mention, Sabi? Yes, so I think um, this is more like very clearly written uh, what you should do. And if you get in trouble uh, and the error messages are also like anticipated error messages are here. Yeah. Uh, and let's say um, that um, you some, something goes wrong. For example, um, you copied, instead of copying the fork, me you made you accidentally copy the original one from your uh, team le team leader but but the team leader created or you directly uh, clone the repo that code refinery created if that happens this recovery box tells you how to fix that yep um, and then it, as before the pull request you have to uh, uh, request the pull request so this time you would select you have to make sure that when the pull request is made, that it's going from your repository, your repository that you have the um, the changes to somewhere else. 
So this arrow would point, there's a small arrow here. If you notice closely, it will show you where it's going. So you have to make sure that it, it, it happens this way. Uh, and then I think without we spend too much time, Daniel, like, you know, because it's everything explained um, yeah. uh, very well here, we will go over the exercise now. Yeah, so before we go to exercise, I would like to take one in very interesting question 36 about the difference between issue and pull request. Mm -hmm. So uh, issue is, a, is, a, is like, a, like a discussion um, thread. So you discuss things. The pull request itself is the change. So you discuss about a change in the issue and then you send the actual change. So that is the difference. And if, um, if I if I meant, uh, if I can add uh, issues as something you can inform that there is something uh, can be improved. Uh, it's not uh, always to be in discussion. Sometimes you can mention there is something going on and you are uh, going to work on it. But it, there is no changes. It's only part of the initiation initiation about these changes and you. Uh, and you can uh, have some feedback, some other colleagues or someone from the uh, organization itself. And the pull request is of the changes that you ask the uh, maintainer to pull the changes from your uh, from your suggestion. Mm. So uh, this question, question 37, it's asked, uh, what is the difference between if you just say quick push or like you be more specific git push upstream origin branch name? Um, so this also depends on the configuration that you have in your Git. So you have this Git config, I think uh, you learned it in the first few days, that if you had configured default branches, um, et cetera, et cetera, um, Git push will just push everything uh, to Git, what you have uh, in, the, in the, the branch you are in. But if you are more specific, it will push the exactly um, your, um, your, uh, the, the branch that is connected in the remote and yours. So you're, you're specifying push exactly from here to exactly to there. So I always use this exact uh, commands, not generic git push, uh, because sometimes when you're in a wrong branch or like, um, it's, it's always um, make life easier and less error prone when you're more specific in git. But you could, of course, configure your Git, you know, to understand when you say Git push, do this. Uh, but I would recommend be specific, and then you would exactly know what you are expecting, and Git would understand it as it is. Um, so now, Daya, is there anything else you want to mention? No, maybe we can go to uh, yes. exercise and come back and discuss a little bit more on this. Yes. Uh, so the difference between last time and this time is you first fork and then clone. Everything else is almost the same. And the issue is created in the original upstream repository, not the one you copied. Um, how long do we have for the exercise, Daniel? It Was it 15 or? 25 minutes, or maybe we could give it 22 minutes, um, 45 past, 45 minutes past the hour. We can okay, come 45 back. 45 past on the hour, it'll uh, we'll be back. Eight, so, and we'll be muting our microphones and go back in your, exercise and uh, tell us if you have yeah. any problem and also ask, keep on asking questions. Yeah. Uh, good luck. Okay, I hope uh, you had the time to do the exercise. And if you need a little bit more time, you can indicate here on our notes. Uh, Sabri, shall we go through it, how we were working on it or Yes, um, like if you could show how you send the pull request with the correct branch from correct branch to correct to the task, correct target branch. Yes, uh, I can show that and then you can see how my pull request is. Pull request is. So in, uh, I am on the central uh, upstream repository forking workflow exercise recorded and you see, uh, I am listing out the issues and you see I have two issues listed out. And one of the issue, there is a pull request already linked to it. And here, this is the other, other one, the other issue I am working on. But I, I forked this uh, repository and I create a branch 
I made some changes. Now I want to open a pull request. Just wanted to show this, that when you open a pull request, you are suggesting the changes towards the upstream uh, repository. So if you if you are trying to open a pull request, you see the base repository, CR workshop exercise, and base main. And head, this is my namespace, and the branch I created uh, for these changes uh, I suggest. So what uh, what it do is it is it will create a pull request on the upstream uh, repository where you forked your uh, copy. This is I want to show this when you pull request you just check it it is doing on the right path. And you create uh, a pull request before that allow edits by maintainers that. Uh, means create uh, the maintenance ca maintenance can edit on your uh, pull uh, change suggestions pull uh, on your branch i would like to add sabri as the uh, reviewer so i can assign ask for review from sabri here and create a pull request so it's it's create a pull request on the cr uh, the upstream repository what where we fork from. Shall we go to the pull request? And I see that there are a lot of pull requests. Sabri, you want to take over the screen and, um, uh, yes, and review my pull request and others? Yes, uh, I'm going to start sharing. Yeah. All good? Yeah. Then you could stop. Yeah, I could see. Yes. <laughs> um, so here um, I see that you know this is the centralized workflow and the recorded version of the exercise that we're going to share, share with you. Um, and let's see um, the um, issues a little bit first. So I have four requests. Okay. Uh, just uh, want so you to know, mention you know, something. Daniel, what, what, um, yeah, what, yeah, you are on the uh, under your namespace. You are on the forked repository, so yes. you don't see the issues issue label there. Yes. So uh, when you when you forked it, and if you want to see the pull request and um, the issues, it will not be there. So I had to go to the place where I um, forked it from, which we call the upstream, right? Um, <clears throat> I go there. And now I see some issues. That's one issue. Um, uh, you are uh, showing the template. Correct. OK, so that's also a good point, actually. So um, we created this um, uh, repository from a template. And that from temp that template, I copied the, I, I made a fork. So I went two, two steps back. So I should have stopped here. So this is the place uh, that I should have stopped. And then I'll go to the issues. Um, so do I have issue by you or maybe closed? As we you you are in the uh, wrong repository, Sabri. You are centralized workflow exercise. We are doing forking workflow exercise. So you are, you are correct. Thank you, Dania. Uh, forking workflow exercise recorded. Now, now looks correct? Yes. Yes. So maybe too much lunch. Um, here, let me search Dania's. Uh, maybe I can find it. No, maybe your username is um, like everything. Okay, let's see again. Uh, do you remember your issue number? Yeah, but uh, what you see that you can, uh, you are you should be notified when I create a review request. But you can uh, number seven. Yes. So let me uh, search again because I think maybe I wrongly spelled your name. Yeah. Let's see like this. When, I why, think why search not when working? you when you filter, you have to filter with order or something like that. So that's uh -huh. what I was saying. Okay, let's try that again. Um, let, let's yeah, I'll just copy your name exactly. It is. Let's see. Um, 
Mm. So if you if you could, uh, click on the order down. Uh, order, yeah. Yeah. Ah, yes, you're correct. You're correct. Then you can find yes. So you have two ratios. So yeah, that I would get. I would like you to review the chia seed body first because this that's one? the next yes. Okay. The next one is something interesting about the workflow. Uh, give that action. But this one okay. okay. So you have this um, chia pudding uh, request is number seven, yeah. uh, and you are talking about issue number eight. So this issue number eight is in the in the upstream repository. Um, yes. So then um, I see that um, you know you have send a pull request, uh, and then your pull request has arrived into the into the correct place, um, and all these green buttons are look green. You know the uh, the yeah. checks. So here, what we wanted to mention um, is that uh, we are also showing something that is, you know, not necessarily needed to understand what we are doing with this cloning, forking, uh, merging um, exercise. Is that the automated testing? So there are some tests um, that going go, go through. So when someone sends a pull request um, or make a commit. Um, you could check whether it's as expected. So you could you could do it at commit level, or you could uh, do it at merge um, or, or pull request level. Uh, so time to time, I, I miss this word. I mix this word merge and pull request because I mostly work on GitLab. So we use the word merge uh, request there. Um, got. So the pull request, when we send that, you could uh, run the test as well. So what happens is your code get uh, checked by a script. Um, so the Git, GitHub can uh, spin up a, um, like a virtual machine with a container uh, and it will run some scripts to check uh, what you have submitted. So here, what it means is that it's all checks are good. So I'll go and check the changed file. So it is a new ingredient. It looks all good, uh, nothing uh, extraordinary. Uh, I would say, uh, I will approve it with saying it it looks what's good. Thank you. And I submit that. At in the pull request, then I see this uh, merge pull request button. So I will merge it. Confirm the merge. So. Um, so one check passed and it merged and your changes um, you made in your fork in the copy you made is now in the main repository. So as, as the maintainer of my uh, this repository, I accepted your changes and there was no um, issue in that. So the second one um, that you uh, said was you are, you are sent, sent two requests. So let's see. Yeah. Chocolate pudding, is it? Yes, yes. Yeah. So this one, uh, no description, so not good. So there should be some description here. And uh, you send it, and uh, which issue are you referring to this here? Let's see. The issue is not uh, tracking here for some reason. Let me go to the, uh, pull, uh, the, the, the pull request and see. Yeah. Centralized workflow exercises recorded. Pull requests. Um, authors, yeah, this one. So, this one has trade. Um, so we could check, um, you know, what has uh, failed. Um, we, we, where should I click, uh, click to see more details on this? Do you know? There is already a details button. You could check details. This one, yeah, yeah. And just want to may, um, specific, uh, specify that this test is something we uh, included in the GitLab action. You will learn how to do this mostly next week with the testing, automated testing episodes. So this is a preview of that, how it works. Uh, so in the, in the test, usually it should uh, print some messages and it has some log files, which should indicate what was exactly wrong. 
let me check so there are five missing ingredients section so the ingredient section is missing so that why it failed so let me go to the pull request again um, search for that and then i will go to the files changed um here so it's uh, showing some um, details i can go to uh, the review change okay no no not yet not yet i to find the the heading maybe it's uh, maybe you forgot like a hash or something in the heading uh no you, i uh, the check was to test um if there is ingredients and mm -hmm. instructions on the um files but yeah. you see that i i haven't done it i said recipe to be updated aha uh -huh. so here you didn't have uh, ingredients so i don't have any recipe i just uh, tried to push uh, mm. um push it and uh, this is not the way it should be because when i try to add some recipe i should add ingredients and instruction instructions that's what we put it on the test uh, uh, test dot check dot py function right what was the name of the test uh, the check, check uh, yeah, yeah. I, I can show that in a moment yeah so it means that it figured out that this heading is missing and also the instructions heading so did you have only three lines in your Yes, I had I, only three three lines. Yes, yeah. um, just wanted so, to show this that it can be failed because mm -hmm. I didn't follow okay. uh, the automated testing thing. Mm -hmm. So can I uh, can I commit this directly to see whether it works? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to commit that. Now I added these two uh, lines. Um, so. It's the headings. So when that happens, the pipeline will run again and we'll go to the conversations and we'll see it's, uh, until it runs. Uh, I think uh, our colleague Samantha is uh, mentioning about um, 40, question 40. Let me have a look at that yeah. one first. Could you explain why I have to set my fork repo as upstream if I can push current branch strawberry has no upstream branch. Mm. Mm -hmm. So I think the, our colleagues are answering the the uh, uh, question that one um, properly. So I, I I don't see that we have to explain it much here. Mm. Yes. So it's, it's about Git configuration as well. You know, how you configure Git could also change. But if you're very specific, if you're, if you're explicit when you do push and pulls, it will be more convenient. Um, then we'll see the um, check. It has passed. Um, Daniel, how, now how, how can I check back again um, what has changed? The file changed. Yeah, file changed. But and the commits um, also you used last time the commit the, commits. Was the, the yeah. two commits yes so this is my commit and this was the original one and also file changed and uh, now it has you know it has passed the chest tests yeah then what happens is then i could go and approve this uh, i don't want you to approve it because uh, as as a matter of fact there is only ingredient and instructions but there is no real recipe for the chocolate pudding but you can suggest that a recipe please can you please update the recipe or something okay yeah but the the function we want to show is that uh, there are checks um, we can automate uh, so uh, if you see that when you uh, um when you do a pull request and all the checks are not uh, green that's something you have to check that uh, there is you follow all these uh, checks updates sometimes we use spell checker so if there is a spell error it will show um, 
spell checker failed or something like that. Yes. But uh, usually maybe it's like uh, if you are developing Python, for example, you might have Py tests that you could check whether it pass. Yeah. Um, um, or if it like C code, there might be uh, checks uh, alongside that. Um, so it will be more or less programmatic testing uh, in the, the real life. Yeah, more on to more about this next week. I next week. Yeah. Okay. So if you are curious about uh, what was this about, uh, you could go to this repository before before next week. Uh, you can click on this GitHub workflows, uh, and then check this file. What does you know? How it is you know summoned? How do you summon the um, check test to be done? So it is a uh, program that runs the check Python recipe. This is how GitHub knows that it has to run it. And then if you go back, you will see that file here, check recipe file. It's a Python code that checks that there are certain things included. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's... yeah, I will try to uh, uh, merge all the requests, but uh, Sabi, if you have a Fourth version under your namespace, right? So since you pushed, uh, as you approved the pull request from my side, there might be some changes in the upstream repository that is not there in your fourth one. Right? Um, let's let's check. Mm. So okay, that fork. Uh, so I have a, I don't have a fork actually. I have not created that one. It was the centralized repository that I had a fork which I shouldn't have created. Um, I could I could create one actually now. So after I created the pool the 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 fork from that repository, you could merge so we could show the uh, yeah. synchronization. Now it's being created. So now it's created. Now it's in the. Let me check the um, the status of it. Um, insights commits. Since I copied it, uh, like now. One, now at one, 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 uh, one past, uh, it will be in a frozen state from that uh, place I copied. Yeah, you can try to uh, review some other pull request as well. Yeah, let's do that. Uh, forking exercise recorded. Mm Yeah, it looks good. Hmm. So it failed. Let's see why it failed. Okay, it was some temporary glitch in Git. Uh, let's see again. Yep. Maybe you also try to merge the same thing? Or which, uh, no, which, uh, I, I, I merged something else. Uh, oh. So you can go to the your namespace. So you will see that your branch is not up, uh, your fork is not up to date with the upstream repository. Yeah, I think now it's okay. Hmm, check pass. So now let's go to my fork. So here, uh, so these are the commits that I have. Let's check the graph. Uh, graphic, code frequency, dependency graph. Um, okay, that's not the one. Commits maybe, yeah. So I am here, four commits. Yeah, if you go to the uh, code, it says Sabri. Um, you Sorry, will which see one? That's yeah, now you could see that this branch is four commits behind. Yes, yes. So if you want to sync uh, to the upstream repository, what you are supposed to do, yeah. Yes, so I could click this button and it will synchronize with the top button. Mm. I could compare also, let's see what, what shows. Um, that is, okay, so actually I, I have not made any changes. So let's say if I had made some changes while that happens, the synchronization might um, probably fail. Uh, let's go back 
and Sync Fork Update Branch. Um, yeah, this branch is up to date. So let's say if I had done some modifications to the main branch in my fork, um, then it might have made some issues, but uh, it's always good practice to not to do it on the main branch, but uh, on, on your own branch. Because once after you fork, you know, you could even modify your main branch if it is not um, protected. Okay, I think the, those are the things we are planning to mention. Maybe we can see when there are any questions that we have to take up in the stream. Yeah, and thank you for all this pull request. Uh, I will try to uh, merge it mm -hmm. later. But thank you for the active participation, sending pull request and creating issues and all. And I hope mm -hmm. you had fun while creating recipes. Yes, so uh, there are some questions about how to directly do it from the command line. Um, for example, send a pull request. Um, usually, you know, it doesn't, uh, you know, with, with the git commands itself, as far as I know, you can't do it, but you could, uh, uh, you know, there are APIs. Uh, we call them APIs, um, which means that you can programmatically access uh, git and uh, do that if that is needed using programs like curl. Uh, and uh, git, uh, you know, uh, get and put uh, instructions, but not with uh, directly with uh, git. Yeah, and um, maybe something I usually do is I try to keep my fork up to date. Mm. Then uh, pull my fork when I need to update. So that's what something I do, but it is uh, maybe the optimal way someone wants to do it. Yes. Yeah, so the keeping up to date uh, without becoming it stale for a long time will help. Otherwise, uh, if you have not done any changes locally, you could always uh, you know update. But if you are keeping on updating locally without syncing, it will create a lot of conflicts. Um, and then this this hash and the number, that is the trigger. So that can, you can also refer to pull requests. Uh, so there are. Um, about the, there is, there's another symbol, I forgot the symbol, so you could say there's at the rate and there are other symbols, you can refer to uh, other uh, commits, you can refer to pools, you can uh, pull requests, you can refer to um, issues. Uh, there seems to be many questions discussing around linking between issues and PRs. Um, so, <laughs> We could, uh, I could again maybe um, uh, test something, um, you know, show something here as well. Yep. So the um, link between the issue and the pull request is the issue is where you discuss the details. That is the discussion. The pull request is the code that you send. Uh, so that's the difference. And why we are linking it is that it's important to have a discussion before you suggest changes. That makes yeah. things, the, the development pipeline um, and uh, you know, the workflows um, less, I would say, you know, more friendly. Yeah, it is when and you work with many people, it's always nice to have a lot of feedback and uh, let other people know about things. So issues, uh, having issues as a workflow is very good. Um, yeah, apart from that, I think let's uh, see whether any other questions. Uh, our code refinery colleagues, do you, is there anything more that, um, any, anything very specific that you know talk, talk during in the questions, the uh, shared document? Yeah, I think um, it, it's all good. Um, so we have, I think, 20 minutes left, Dania, is it? Yes, uh, mm -hmm. for it was supposed to be on discussion, but uh, if there is more question to discuss it, that would be nice. Um, let's see whether there's anything uh, we can discuss more.
Yes. Okay, maybe you know we could go through the the whole process again because there are some questions about these issues and all. Yeah. Um, so what I will do is um, we have this repository uh, forking exercise, but um, I have a copy now of that in my namespace as well. Uh, I will do it again um, to show what is happening. So before I do that, um, working flow exercise recorder. Working access record because I have too many tabs open. I, I just want to make sure it's the correct one. So here uh, I'm going to open an issue. Uh, new um, uh, I got the spelling always um sorry. Recipe, recipe um, for uh, what should I for this for something? Okay, uh, so this is where things started. So I, I went through this repo and I found out that there's something I want to contribute. So new recipe, this is start and I submit that issue. Now this is the original, the repository that I copied fork from, not copy, copy fork fork from. So then I will submit new issue. Now this is the uh, discussion, and then if you could uh, in issue twenty eight, if you could mention something, you know, okay, you know, please go ahead or something. Um, done? Uh, yeah. I don't see it yet. Did I comment it? Did you, yes. Have you okay, now that? I put. Okay. Yes, that would that would be great. Please go ahead. So now I, I see that you know I should be working on it, but there will be longer discussion on what's and what's not. Now I should be going uh, go for that. Then I'll go to my repository. The I mean the fork in my namespace. I'm going to. Uh, on it um, I could I could of course do it in the in the the, in the git the on the web page as well but maybe it's easier to um, show the uh, details on the terminal so I'm in my terminal uh, let me see where am I so I'll go to steps. So then, now it is the cloning. The issue is open. The forking has done. It clone repository. So as you can see, it is cloning from my namespace, not from the original place I forked from. Now it is cloned. I will change that directly. CD forking sizes. Git branch and then after the, after after working on this kind of repositories especially when forked it's it, it could it might be very useful to know git um the which which um, which remote which remote are you actually connected to so if you type the command git remote verbos it will tell you the origin refers to this your the the fork you made so if it is the, the repository that you don't have access to, then you, have, you should change that. So it's all good. And then I'll create a branch. It uh, branch, because I'm on the main branch, it will create from the uh, main branch, or you could specify create from what? I will use my name. Um, um, so I could track it easily. New um, so then I can ask again git branch, but then it will show that I am still on the master branch. 
because I created the branch, I didn't change it. So git switch or git check out the branch, then git branch I'm in this branch. So I'm going to make the change now. Uh, let's make go to the salads. So I'm going to now a like new salad. Um, I could start from an existing one. New next. Then so here I will add um, what should I add? Um, yeah. Some some random things. Four cups of um, oil, right? right? Then I will save the file, and I will ask git status. So that file is modified on my local computer. Git Git is not tracking that. So let's say now if um, if you um, accidentally delete that file, you can't recover it. Um, then I will add git refi, git add the new file. Now actually, at least the git knows it now. If it gets deleted, you can get it back. Git commit. Now this is where the commit message comes. So we are going to say that I'm going to, what I'm going to say is that the commit I'm going to make uh, is going, is talking about this issue that we have been talking. So issue number 28. So when this file ends up in the main code base, it will fix us this new change fixes issue number 28. So now it is locally here. Now if I lose my laptop or like, you know, somebody steal it, still it's gone because it, it didn't reach the cloud. So now what I want to do is to send this change to the local, the, the fork I made. Then git status again. Uh, now in back, then I will do git push explicitly. So it doesn't matter how the configurations are. So I'll put say git push explicitly to the origin. So what is the origin? That uh, I'm going to hash it up and stop it by executing to show the um, origin again. So the origin, the label origin refer to this URL. So we, I could have used this URL instead. So I could even use this complete URL if I want. Git push origin or that URL. I want to go it upstream and, and I want to create a name uh, branch in my fork with the same name and connect both uh, together. So I'm going to send that. So now this goes to my branch, right? Uh, so it's here um, in this um, repository. So then what happens is, now this is in my fork and the main developers don't know about it. So that is when we talk about the fork. Now we have to send the uh, request, um, which we call the pool request. So the developers can inter integrate it into the main branch. Um, so did, did you mention all the terms, uh, Dania, or do you want to, do we need to explain it more? Yeah, I think it is okay uh, that uh, we have mentioned it, but uh, if there is any questions you want to, I think everything is us. I am trying to uh, merge in between, uh, but I think Radovan will help me. And there are um, four more pull requests. Uh, one is from my side, but uh, thank you for all the pull requests, but we will merge it. And you can try to sing your folk um, that there are more merge is already there. Uh, is there anything we missed to uh, add or anything from our co colleagues? So, so maybe Samanda or Richard wants to say the 
uh, summary and ask for feedback. Should we do that? We have 10 more minutes and you, you can ask questions. Yeah, I'll um, come. I think um, <clears throat> we could um, take maybe one more question here. Yeah. Mm. Um, this we have a look. Is there anything specific you want to take up with Richard that we missed during yeah. the discussion? Oh. Yeah, so sometimes this branch creation, sometimes, uh, you know, you send from the main, so you from, from the main of the fork to main of the upstream, it, it also could um, work, but, um, you know, it's better to create your own branch first. Okay, so please, uh, I think it's been um, merged. Um, yeah. yeah, one thing is my issue is resolved and the pull request has left, but I can't find my recipe. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. um, so that actually, you know, maybe we learned git uh, blame uh, or git annotate at some point. Um, I think we have already done that. Okay, let's see. Um, so this in this exercise, so this is the main uh, workflow. Uh, and the uh, file, um, the the commits um, that were made. Uh, let's see if I can find those uh, settings. And where is the list of commits? Um, yeah, it's not there. Let me go back here and see. Um, that's not the list. There is a list of maybe insights and commits. Let's see. Uh, so it just shows the number. Let's see the traffic. Okay, that shows a number, contributors. It's taking some time. Um, so one way would be, you know, I, I, I have these four commits. So I made four commits. If I click those commits, I could see which files uh, they were referring to. Um, then in, in that way you could find, you know, if you, if you forgot everything about, you know, which recipe it was or file name or um, all the details, you could still find out. So if I go to that recipe, that, that file, then I would see that, you know, what I have done. Uh, so that is one way. So this you could do in the terminal with the command called git show and the commit message, it will show that. Mm, apart from that, let's see a file, maybe a desert, um, this file. And if you go to a specific file, you will find this uh, tab called blame. And in that file, it'll tell, um, it'll uh, detail who contributed at what, at what point. Yeah. So this is not really to blame people, it is to show that who did what. So those are different ways that you could find out um, what you did. Yes. Also, I think there is this uh, pulse or something. Let me check that one. Inside. Um, yeah, people is one thing. And then, where is that? Four mm, papers, maybe. There's, it gives the number of contributions by each person. Um, maybe contributors. Yeah. So here, I think we showed that earlier, you know, how many lines, how many commits um, yeah. that has been contributed. 
Yeah, I think that, that's all, Richard. Anything else uh, yeah. that we had mentioned for tomorrow? Yeah. Is there anything that? No, next week. For the next, next, yeah, next next week, the next day, day four. Yeah, we can start talking a little bit about next week. So this week has been the version control week. So basically everything about Git and these very, well, artificial, but somewhat, yeah, if you can share the feedback form, that would be good. That would be good. Um, but next week we really change tracks and we begin looking at much more applied things. So if I remember right, Tuesday is social coding and reproducible research, where we talk about how to build larger projects, how to license your code, encourage feedback, how to share things and so on. Reproducible research is making, um, well, science, computational research more reproducible. Wednesday is Jupyter and documentation, and then um, Thursday is automated testing and modular code development. And basically all of these future lessons somehow use Git in more applied things. So if some things you see today seem a bit abstract, if you come next week, you can see the real use cases um, as we do things. So on the other hand, since these are so, so we used to have a lot of exercises for next week, and we still do. But next week is all focused on demos. So during the courses, we'll give demos on the topics. And then, um, and yeah, so, so we give demos, but we leave it up to you to do the exercises yourself after the workshop. So it'll feel a little bit different, but we still have plenty for you to do just with a 20 or 25 or 30 minute exercise break, it's just not feasible to have enough time for everyone to do everything. So this is what we've settled on. But mm -hmm. definitely- So Richard, the, yeah. the, we have the feedback. Could you mention a little bit about yes. how the feedback works? Yes, so we have the feedback here. I guess you've seen this from past weeks. Um, we're writing the news for next week the next day, which will also be emailed out. Um, please do add in all the, all your comments and so on. Um, yeah. And also things to improve, uh, you know, please, you know, give honest opinion, improve next, yeah. but there are some things that we can improve by next week, yeah. maybe in future courses. And we don't take that, you know, um, personally you know if, if yeah. something yeah. can improve so please provide that in a you know, positive yeah. way of course you know positive feedback you know how to improve it um yeah. in you know in a like um uh, as much as you can describe you know not not too much yeah. either uh, yeah. but um if, if you saw something that we should improve please let us know uh, we, we don't say take it as negative we, we take it as a positive thing for us to improve um, next time yeah, yeah. so and oh, go ahead yeah, and uh, there was a question about how to uh, interact with us. Join the Zulip chat as mentioned in the chat. So we will be there most of the time, most of us. Uh, but uh, you are welcome to join the community chat. That yes. would be great. Yeah. Also, and also, uh, if you want to re-deliver this, please join the Code Refinery team. Um, organize local workshops uh, in your uh, workplace if you like the uh, workshops. Uh, and uh, also, Danya, you know, since morning they were seeing us a lot, but you know, there's a lot of people behind this, yeah. uh, the organizers and the people who coordinate this. For example, Richard was managing the the, the stream with a lot of uh, balls juggling. He has, you know, in addition to the work, yeah. he had some uh, issues uh, he has to attend to. Yeah. Uh, and also Samantha was uh, really uh, helping. And uh, Without... Also, the team leaders uh, who are yeah, yeah. Uh, working with the team, that was very uh, good that we have that kind of uh, different type of learning teams, mm -hmm. that everything, all, all behind the scenes, you you saw only us today, but there were many people behind the scene and just want to thank you. Uh, thank you for your participation and thank you for all yeah. uh, who work mm -hmm. very hard to make it possible yeah. behind the scene. Thank you. So Richard, as yeah. a final thing, if somebody yeah. wants to 
um, let's say, thank us, what is the best way to do that? Uh, tell people about this. And um, then in a few years, if you're still involved in this, help mentor the people who take the course in the future. Yeah. And if you're really interested, then come join us later. But starting local with mentoring others is, I think, the most important um, impact. Do you know more, more about this ambassador program? Do you mm. have any more information about it? Uh, um, there's something, yeah, there's something called Code Refinery Ambassadors, mm -hmm. which we're starting, where basically it's people that know a lot about these tools and want to go and support people at their own institutions or um areas a little bit more in these things maybe we can hear more about this next week i think it's on the website maybe someone can add it to the notes down there mm -hmm. um yeah I, um, I i would like to say one thing so earlier in the day there was a comment about uh about niceness and political correctness that we removed so this wasn't a bad thing like there's nothing wrong but um it's something that we didn't have time to go into more depth at the time and actually next uh, tuesday in social coding would be a good time to talk more about these like bringing more people on boards so in hindsight us the people that had been managing the notes and answering the questions I think we would have liked to have left it there, but pointed out to um, resume this next week. So us in the background would like to apologize for that. But we do like, in general, like even off topic cheering and other things like that. Okay. Um, anything I else? I think, uh, yeah, that's it. Um, it's, 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 it's in your hand, Richard, now. So. Yeah, okay. You often take Great. down things. So, um, yeah, I guess we've said enough. We hope to see you next week, and we hope you like the change of pace then. So, maybe we can hang up now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you very Bye. much.